Hello, this is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. This is episode two of Watercolor Wednesday. We're going to be using the Gonzai Tambi watercolor set. Here are all the colors. I will find it hard to come up with a pale skin tone, so that's going to be fun. You can watch me struggle with that. Um, I'm showing you four of the Gorgeous Girl stamps. I have a video showing you all of them and naming them and giving you the numbers of them. I didn't have that information ready for these. Um, so you can watch that video. It should be pretty recent down below. Not down below, but in my list of videos. Um, so I stamped these on Bristol Smooth paper, which is good for watercoloring. It is not watercolor paper, which I also have. I'll be using that in um, future videos as well. And... Just as a disclaimer, I am learning, definitely, about watercoloring. I want to get better at it. Um, I have even purchased, I meant to show you in the beginning of this video, but I've purchased some like homemade watercolor, like half pans, which are those little tiny rectangles with watercolor in them, off of Etsy. And um, I have some more coming. I also have like a sample dot card with a lot more colors on it coming. I'm pretty excited. So... I am going to use these tiny Lawn Fawn stamp blocks to kind of mix paint on and dilute and things like that instead of the watercolor paint palette, the plastic one that was to the right of me that I forgot I owned for some reason and planned on using. Um, so we're going to use these stamp blocks instead. Um, so I just want to kind of practice and get better and that was partially the reason for Watercolor Wednesday was to kind of practice and get better and use many different forms of color for watercoloring. So in this case, it's a watercolor palette and I am getting more um, homemade colors where people sell like individual colors, just ones that I really like, but I want to come up with a good palette of those as well from different sellers. And, um, coloring with ink like stamp pads stamping them onto an acrylic block and adding water and water coloring that way so there are a lot of different ways I don't have watercolor pencils yet I did see some at the craft store a local craft store um they were just kind of expensive for what they were and I'm not too sure on them yet I'm sure I'll probably have to eventually cover them just to have some variation I just already don't really like colored pencils. I don't like coloring with colored pencils. I don't like the way it looks. And so I'm hesitant. Um, but I might watch some videos on it and see uh, if I can make it look good. Um, and then, yeah. So this set, uh, I just de-stashed a brand new one in a de-stash box. So I hope the person who bought it has fun with it. Uh, there are a lot of colors in here. Like I said, I do have a problem coming up with kind of a pale skin tone for this first girl. Um, I give the second girl a darker skin tone, which is similar to the hair on this one. And I am drying it with my heat gun in between just to kind of lighten it a little bit. Um, I may need to watch some like beginner videos on watercoloring. Uh, you can see in her hat the color is very dense in certain areas. I don't know if I need to like dilute it more. If you have some tips, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Um, I'm sure that has something to do with it because then when you're coloring over things it becomes very opaque, um, which means not see-through. Uh, I think for a good chunk of my life like I do with a number of words. Um, I thought opaque meant like transparent because to me that's what it sounds like. So I'm always confused by the word opaque and only right now in my life I'm understanding that when I see that word it doesn't mean what I think it means. <laughs> so that's what happened here a little bit. Um, what I'm doing off screen since I didn't this area was I wanted to zoom in and show you the coloring uh, whatever I'm doing off screen is I'm either getting water or I am dabbing the paintbrush to the paper towel to get rid of 
some of the ink or some of the water. And in here, I'm either getting water to try to dilute the color or uh, emptying out my brush of color so that I can pick up more. Like if I have too, I've laid too much color in her hair, I want to take, suck some of it out, some of the paint. Um, I will empty my brush into the paper towel because it just sucks it right into it. And then I will uh, run the brush through her hair and then the brush picks up some of the color and then I can get rid of it again in the paper towel. So if I've laid down too much, I can always pick it up. Watercolor is also pretty forgiving um, when you need to like dilute or fix a mistake, stuff like that. You can do it with just, you know, a clean brush and clear water. Um, obviously, there is a lot. I don't know. Um, part of that may be about mixing colors. So here I'm having trouble. And I probably should have added white. I think I only thought about the white uh, for um, the purple that I dilute later to make more of a lavender color uh, for this girl, I believe. Um, I probably should have added some white to this and it may have helped a little bit. Maybe a little bit more of a red tone or a pink tone as well. Um, I need to work on what colors go together. Um, this just kind of became kind of an orangey, strange skin tone, but that's fine. So I'm just trying to kind of dilute it out and make it a little less orange at least. And then I think I dry in between here and I'm not sure that drying in between is part of the watercoloring process either I'm sure if you're doing it correctly then that's not necessary uh, I just didn't want all of the wetness to be kind of sitting on the paper so this is the purple and I was flinging it everywhere and I found that I was I was mixing these too fast, too close to my images because I was flinging color onto the images as well. I do it onto the second one a little too much. Um, I end up reaching for white and I believe I zoom in and I show you, not zoom in, but I hold the, the brush up to the camera because I'm going to grab some white and that makes it a lot lighter. So it has a very opaque white in the set. And it makes a much lighter purple. Maybe not quite lavender, but much lighter. So I'm just getting rid of some of the color on the paper towel because I have a lot in my brush. I probably only needed a smaller brush. Um, these are just a cheap set of brushes. That's probably another thing is that there are much better brushes out there. I'm just not super serious about watercoloring. So I'm not ready to invest in super expensive brushes by any means. Um... I think I got a pack of six different sizes for like $5 at Michael's, these blue ones. And then I also have some of the Black Artists Loft brand, which is their brand. Uh, they were probably inexpensive as well. So uh, I was just using the two smallest ones. I believe I did that in the last or the first episode of Watercolor Wednesday as well. Um... I'm not coloring a lot of images that have or require a large brush or have a large area to color in. Um, so here for the hearts, these are actually pretty solid red. And uh, I was able to fill them all in with whatever was on my brush in the first go round. And I just used the edge of the block for the red because I was out of blocks. I actually have another block sitting in the back, but I didn't grab it. So I'm just going to dry her so that will finish her off. Um, I did stamp, like I said, four of these. I'm only going to color two um, because this took a lot longer than I thought. I took a break to go get fresh water and clean off my little blocks. And I have already flung like purple paint on this image and I don't know how I got it that far. But... Um, I can cover that up and if I end up using her on a card, I can cut her out. So the rest of the splotching you see doesn't really apply. Um, but the one that got on her wing is going to get covered up anyway. So for this one, there's like a really nice 
very opaque um, periwinkle blue. I'm trying to dilute it down and then I do add some white because I'm trying to get that really light kind of periwinkle wing color. And I'm trying to spread that around evenly. I really like watercoloring. It's really kind of, you know, therapeutic. Um, I do, I think I prefer at the moment, which is just to real watercolor people, probably atrocious, but uh, I prefer the Zig Real Brush markers for watercoloring. Um, it could be the color selection available and it could be, you know, that it's all just brush. I can just lay down the color. Um, that's what I used in the first episode of Watercolor Wednesday. And um, at the moment, that's my favorite watercolor. I'm hoping that the homemade watercolor uh, pans that I'm getting are um, really good or that I like using them. Uh, I've already sampled. I did a swatch of a couple of them. I meant to show you, but I forgot to show you in this video, the couple that I've received so far. Um, but I'm hoping to play more with those and the dot card as well, which has a lot more colors on it. So this one I use kind of the same brown combo in the set. They're the two browns next to each other towards the bottom uh, that I used for the hair on the first girl. I'm using for the skin tone for this fairy. And then her hair is going to be kind of a kind of a black but not too black because I want the detail to show through. So it's not it's not black and it's not gray because I don't want black hair to look like gray hair. Um so hopefully it just looks like black hair in the light maybe. So I'm going to dry that which also helps lighten it a little bit and kind of um suck out a lot of the pooling that I did. And so here I am also going to add some white with the same brush. So I have to spend a minute cleaning it out very well so I don't get any black in my white pan. So I'm cleaning that out a bunch of times and then I'll pick up some white just to lighten that up a little bit. And I might do that twice. Oh, well, maybe not. So I will try my best. I probably should have used the smaller brush, but I did okay. Um, this brush is also pretty small. It's just only a little bit bigger than the other one. Uh, but for getting in like the nooks and crannies right by the neck and the very uh, tips of the hair as well. I wanted to make sure I didn't go wildly out of the lines. So again, I'll usually use the method of if I have too much already on my image, I'll empty the brush into the paper towel, which the paper towel becomes its own work of art by the time you're done with all the colors mashed in there. Um, get rid of some of the the ink in my brush or the paint into the paper towel and then suck out from the image where I have too much back into my brush and just empty that again. Um, I think for next Wednesday I will attempt, I'll try and learn some more in between, uh, but I'm going to attempt using actual watercolor paper because I have Canson watercolor paper. And um, I have a whole pad of it and I don't really use it. I got teal paint everywhere. I flung it and it's on her face and her hair. So I try to fix that later too. Um, this teal kind of matches my background pad. So it's kind of hard to see. But I chose the, the teal from the set. So I believe for next Wednesday, I might use the new Concord and Ninth ink cubes. I got the set of 22 colors 
in the mini ink cubes. Um, I believe I can watercolor with those. I don't know why I wouldn't be able to. I think I will use those and find uh, an image that I want to color in. I haven't decided that part yet, but I think I will use those inks. So this, this set is, is really nice and I think they're really good watercolors. I don't know how much it is new. I honestly can't remember. The one I gave away that was brand new was gifted to me. Someone was getting rid of stuff and they'd never touched it. And I can't remember what I paid. I want to say, cause I got mine on Amazon. I want to say it was around 36 ish dollars, uh, probably under 40. So that's not bad for the colors that you get. It is hard unless you know what you're doing when it comes to mixing colors, unlike myself, um, to get like a lighter skin tone. Um, but you can always fill in the blanks with, you know, individual pans of watercolor. Um, I've also heard of people like going in on buying the one that comes to mind is like Daniel Smith watercolor, like the tubes of watercolor paint and they share it. Like they squeeze them out into, um, like if you buy a tube, you could split that between, you know, three or four people, I think. And then you squeeze them into pans. And I don't know how watercolor, I think they just dry and harden. I don't think I finished watching a video on how to make watercolors yourself because it was very involved. And then I decided that was something I did not want to do ever. Um, but I think you can squeeze them into a pan if you just buy watercolor, like goopy watercolor. And I think it dries on its own. Anyway, um, so there's that. There's many different things we will visit in this series. I hope you had fun watching today. I didn't, won't say you probably learned anything, but that's okay. Um, thank you for watching. Here is another look at the palette, which is kind of messy and has gold splatter everywhere. And I will see you guys next time and for Freestyle Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye.